Good afternoon, good morning guys. We're starting off today's video showing you a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff. We have a bunch of orders prepared for you all. Um, everyone that ordered some Rex H hoodies and t-shirts, thank you very much. We've spent the past couple hours packing orders, got the local ones there, international ones there. We're sending them all out today. Thank you all. Damn dude, you excited fam? I'm gonna give you, need to give you your uh, t-shirt as well. Oh yeah, baby, packing up the daily. In the last video, we managed to get the MR2 back on the ground for the very first time with the V6 engine. And today, we're gonna button everything up like I've been talking about in the last video. We're gonna put all the fuel lines on, we're gonna get PCV lines on. Lachlan went over to Repco and just picked up some of that stuff. And I also have special little flex for Lachlan as well in my bedroom. I bought one of these back um, when I was doing my V6 swap. I tried to put this on my car and it just didn't, didn't work well. I don't, I don't even know what went wrong, but you cooked it. I, I, I cooked it. This is a HKS coolant cap and Lachlan is gonna have that. There you go, dude. Limited edition. Limited edition, Ooh. boys. The V6 is looking really good, guys. It's it's in there. Um. The man says speak normally and speaks like that. Mm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Here's a better look at the engine sitting in the MR2 engine bay. It's a 1MZFE. I'm just gonna, you know, go over everything again. We've got wires and stuff just chilling everywhere. We need to put a intake manifold on here. We need to connect up some grounds. We need to connect up the mass airflow sensor, some fuel lines, mount the fuel pressure regulator, get that coolant cap back on. We need to get the overflow pipe running all the way across there. So the overflow pipe is actually really long. It goes all the way from here, back all around there. So we need to make up some brackets as well. Some little vacuum lines we have little bungs for so we can just block them off because they're not needed. We also have to mount a polyurethane engine mount bushing. That's because there's more torque in the V6 than there is in the 3SGE. So obviously with more torque, there's more engine turning. So you need a stiff a bit of rubber to like hold that, or in this case, a stiff a bit of polyurethane to like hold that flex from, you know, ruining anything or ruining this stock engine mount. And we also of course have our aeromotive fuel pressure regulator which we've never installed before. We need to do a lot more research on how to properly, you know, configure this thing, but it's a, Lachlan says it's pretty easy. You've got these like little screw in, screw in barbs. You sort of screw them in and then just stick some hose line to it and then stick clamp it on and. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure he knows what he's talking about, guys. No, let, let's, let's show them. Can you show them? No, no, no. No, no. It's got little like screwy ends and it like just screws in there. So it, it should be, should be all right. Oh, we got, we got this. We got this. Should be yes. <laughs> Dude, that looks litty ass. So an unfortunate circumstance that happened when I was when we took the gearbox out was um, the speed sensor. So you need this to actually sort of get your taco working. Taco or speed? I don't know, it, it does something. You need this electronic thing, right? Where's pulling... the old, old one? You got the old one? Yeah, we'll show them. <laughs> Here's the old one. It somehow managed to break completely in half. You can like see it literally yeah. just cracked. It's completely, it just snapped off. Yeah, you honestly could probably like reuse that. Oh, I guess not now. <laughs> we we're very lucky because we needed a speed sensor and someone on the Facebook pages uh, was selling one. So Lachlan literally just went over and picked one up. I think it was like 80 bucks, but it's really good because MR2 parts are actually quite accessible here. Just usually you got to pay a premium for MR2 parts. For some reason I'm finding like the chaser parts are actually better priced than some of the MR2 parts that we've needed to buy in the past. So it's a little bit strange because this is an MR2 and this is a car from Japan that was never actually sold here. So this was sold here. Just, yeah, I don't know why. Probably the most obscure part of this build is this long as line that just doesn't really make any sense, but it does make sense when you think about it. The overflow, uh, it starts over here. So we have to loop it all the way around to here. So we just got a long ass pipe for it. There's just this ground wire that we need to mount up uh, connecting from the transmission to the body to the chassis um, and we need this because it's just another ground of many grounds. Almost. Nice. We're now attempting to install the uh, fuel pressure regulator. You can see that it needs a bracket. It's gonna go on this bracket. We've just marked up the holes and stuff, so hopefully it goes on really well. We need to get a drill bit going right through into the engine bay coming out to the interior. So it's a little bit risky, but this should do the job. If it doesn't, then Lachlan's gonna have two holes in his firewall that aren't ideal. How's it going, guys? <laughs> 
Banana stop, stop, stop. I got a better idea. I got a better idea. I see the chill. Oh, go. <laughs> oh. Stop, stop, stop. Too much, too much, too much. You're doing it the right way? Oh. Oh, oh brother. Brother. It's very not straight. It's very not like, straight. Very not straight. I can't believe you just you just did that. Just reading the instructions here, we're a little bit confused on what the inlet and outlet port are. On the instructions, it says that both of these are inlet ports, so we're not really too sure if we put the inlet on outlet on either side. But we know that this one is a return line here, so he's hesitating. <laughs> clean? Very not clean. Oh boy. I want to teach you guys because I'm also learning as well. But we're trying to figure out how a fuel pressure regulator works. And in simple terms, all it does is supply constant pressure to the engine. So on the 1MZFE, it is rated to 50 PSI. So it needs to have a constant supply of 50 PSI of petrol towards uh, the engine, to the injectors or whatever. So that's what this does. Um, there's actually a gauge that will go on this and you can put that on. And you can see what pressure it's reading and you can adjust the pressure with this little knob up here. And um, all we're doing is we're connecting the return line down here. We're connecting the inlet pipe right here and the outlet pipe right there. So you also need to use specific fuel lines. So you need to use EFI fuel lines and EFI fuel clamps. So this is an EFI fuel line. EFI fuel clamps look a little bit different compared to other normal sort of hose clamps. You can see that they've got like a, a middle piece that makes the whole thing sort of more circular. So when you tighten this bolt, it clamps on all parts of the hose rather than just the sides. We're now filling the MR2 up with oil for the very first time. You excited, dude? It's the first time this this engine's seen fresh oil in probably a good 20 years or so. <laughs> no, probably about a year. Yeah, so 4.7 4 liters of Castrol Edge 5W30, the good stuff. Lachlan uh, loves it. Fuel pressure regulators in quite successfully. Lachlan managed to do all that as well as changing the fuel filter down below. So everything, we're pretty much ready to start this thing. We're gonna fill the uh, transmission up with fluid as well and we might turn the key today. I don't know, we might see if it'll at least crank over because then it'll mean that we won't have to take anything apart and stuff and we'll be able to confirm that it actually does turn over. More cables? Oh boy. Oh, just the math. We just got the math. Yeah? I think I'm just math. Math cable. <laughs> just a little bit to go, dude. It's vibrating. It's now the next day, Lachlan is putting in the battery now and we are almost ready to turn the key for the very first time. Now, we've got everything connected up, fluids are in the engine, we're filled up with engine oil and transmission fluid. So we're pretty much ready to start this thing. We just need to make sure that there's enough oil pressure in the engine, so we need to crank it without having the fuel pump go off. And we're hoping that it's gonna turn over. All right, if it doesn't then, oh boy. Excited dude? Very. How excited are you out of 10? We've already been over this in a previous video. Very excited. This is how excited I was to lose my virginity. This is how excited I am to V6 for <laughs> You're more excited than losing your virginity? <laughs> Much more excited. Battery's going in! Ho 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 ho! This is the moment you've all been waiting for. The first ever test fire on this car. We're gonna turn the key for the very first time with the new engine. We're praying that it starts. We're, we're really unsure if it's gonna even turn over or not. We put this engine together ourselves. Never been done before. I'm, I'm very nervous because it could catch fire or something. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be loud. It doesn't have an exhaust on, so I'm gonna have to... Well, it's not gonna fire up. I pulled everything. You pulled the... Oh, you just wanna see if it cranks over? Okay, we'll, we'll have to put... Your... So you'll... Let's see if it turns over. <laughs> yeah. yeah, ready? Yeah. Yeah. Please. Please. Dude, that's crazy. Holy. That's crazy. That's crazy. You want to see what it looks like? Oh, man. Holy crap. It's cranking. That's, that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah. How cool is that? I'm writing a lot. Yeah, it doesn't have... We don't have one engine mat in. Your, your plenum's not even on properly, remember? Well, we're gonna connect up everything before we officially start it. <laughs> Everything's all plugged in and ready to go. We have all the lines connected, all the vacuum lines. Everything's ready. 
Um, it's only a matter of turning the key now. The only issue that we're having so far that we're both a little bit confused about is the fuel pressure regulator reading. So we can't even hear the fuel pump priming or making any sound at all. And looking at the gauge in the fuel pressure regulator, we can't see the needle moving. On the 3VZ, what I did was I put my hand in the AFM box and that seemed to prime the fuel fuel pump. On the 1MZ, I have no idea how to do that at all if you bridge cables or whatever. Um, so we don't, I don't exactly know how to prime the fuel pump. So that probably is the only issue right now. We need to figure out how to get a fuel pressure reading on the uh, FPR and we'll go from there, but we're almost ready to do the first ever proper test fire. We got we got this ready because you shouldn't do anything with fuel without a fire extinguisher. I am nervous, bruh. I am nervous. Hopefully it works. Please. I'll watch the reading. No, nothing's happening. No, nothing's happening? No, nothing's happening. What do you mean? So you... I'm telling you, nothing's happening. What? It just was starting before. Ready? Yeah. That now? 35. So it needs 50. Does is, it? is it going up anymore? It keeps it? going up, yeah. It's at 50 now, okay. Keep trying. There's no leaks. It's we gone. should hear at least it's sputter or something. Yeah, ready? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> let, try it again, let it run for a bit longer. Oh my god, it started! Yeah, fuck yeah. Right, ready? Yeah. Wait, 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 let me record, let me record. <laughs> I didn't think it was gonna start! <laughs> okay? Ready? Yep. More or less? More or less? <laughs> Again? Sure, okay. Is it, that wasn't you turning it off, was it? No. So just stalling out. Sure. Ready? Pressure or? Ah, just, just go, go again. I'll play with this. I think it's just like got a vacuum line missing or I don't know. Something's burning. It starts though. Something's burning. Or is that just? Probably just the smell of the exhaust. I can't believe it actually started. That's crazy. So we don't even know if it's going to be running perfectly yet because we do, need, we do need to fill it up with coolant and stuff. It hasn't got any coolant in there, so we're not running it for long. We don't want to get it too hot to cause any damage. Um, Pretty good, huh? Well, it turned on. Turned on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So it's now the next day and the whole of yesterday I was filming two videos. So I was filming the MR2 starting for the very first time and also filming the Chaser because I was fixing some stuff up with the Chaser doing a major service on it. So prepare for a video coming on the Chaser very soon. Now I just wanted to say we weren't really able to like show our excitement because we were working so hard throughout the whole day. Trust me when I say Lachlan and I were over the moon with this thing cranking over and starting for the first time. I also wanted to quickly give a mention of course to woodsport.org who of course is the sponsor of this build. They supplied the wiring harness completely free of charge for us. Also supplied an engine mount. Head over to woodsport.org if you want to do anything like this. A V6 swap in an MR2, uh, SW20, AW11. I think they do ZW30 stuff, I don't know. If you guys are interested in doing a swap like this, head over to woodspot.org and talk to Paul. You can see how good he does his stuff because we would not be able to do anything like this in my garage without a plug and play wiring harness. Everything literally just went in easily. Woodspot.org guys, Woodspot baby. Need to put one of these stickers on this thing. And there is only one thing left to start this thing properly for the first time officially, and that is tr trying to get these coolant pipes sorted. So the pipe on this side is a little bit finangled. It's a little bit tricky to get in. There's like all these different turns and stuff. So Lachlan needs to do a little bit of research and find a way that we can get that coolant pipe uh, running all the way down to the coolant pipes of the chassis. So, so I've also noticed that the MR2 videos aren't getting as many views as like the Chaser videos and other MR2 videos like my MR2. I just wanted to ask you guys a question on whether or not you sort of enjoy that stuff. I know the people that watch this stuff obviously really enjoy it, but for the people that aren't clicking on those MR2 videos, like the V6 Swap MR2 Benki video that of course you've clicked on, um, is there anything else you guys want to see besides V6 Swapping MR2s? Um, more Chaser content, more MR2 content? I don't know, but let me know because obviously we're trying to get content out there that you guys want to watch, so I, I hope that made sense. I can't speak to the camera today. Just, I don't know, I'm a YouTuber, right? Right? 
Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next one. Um, again, let me know in the comments down below what you want to see next in the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. See ya.